Welcome back Geeky Gun guys and gals. Today, sorry one second. Go ahead. No, I can't do another extraction. I'm helping my mic do a YouTube video. I understand. I understand. I am. Anyways. What is going on Geeky Gun guys and gals? So today I'm going to do something a little different and I'm actually going to be doing a movie review on the Netflix movie Extraction. But before you continue watching, make sure you watch the movie first because this is a spoiler review. So spoiler alert. So this movie was actually based on a graphic novel called Ciudad, which means city. And in the graphic novel, the entire city is pretty much after this soldier and the woman he's trying to extract. Gun movies and graphic novels, man. You guys are getting the best bang for your buck today. So this movie was directed by first-time director Sam Hargrave. And if that name sounds familiar, he was the stunt coordinator for a lot of the Marvel movies, including Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. So what, you're just not going to watch this movie? And you can really tell that it was filmed by a stuntman just because of how amazing the shots were and the risks that he took. Not only that, but it was produced by Chris Hemsworth and the Russo brothers and was actually written by the Russo brothers. But this movie was super gritty and super action packed. Like the grit just straight up reminded me of Lone Survivor where they're just getting shot up and pushing through and bleeding on their plate carriers and just spitting blood. Me, if my gout flares, I'm out for a week. These guys are getting shot, stabbed, hit by cars, and they're still pushing on. But you've already seen the movie, so you know that it's about the biggest drug lord in India versus the biggest drug lord in Bangladesh. And one drug lord kidnaps the other drug lord's kid, and. You know where that goes. Extraction is very John Wick-esque. Just the feel of Rake's manipulation with the gun and John Wick's manipulation of the gun. They actually start almost the exact same too. In the first John Wick, it started where the movie ended, where he's bleeding out, about to die, and he brings out his phone and watches a video of his wife. But in Extraction, Rake is bleeding out and instead of pulling his phone out, he's just having these Vietnam flashbacks of his kid. Which, by the way, his memory of his son was super blurry throughout the movie. But as it got towards the end on the bridge, it got very clear, just saying. And the symbolism in this movie was beautifully done. The theme that I got from this movie was very father-son. You got the drug lord from Bangladesh, who ends up kind of mentoring that dick lick Farhad, where Farhad's constantly trying to prove himself to Amir, and even like chops off his pinky and gives it to him as a gift. And then you got Thor and Ovi, where Rake is kind of making up lost time with his late son by trying to protect Ovi. And Ovi, not really having a father figure, because his drug lord dad's in prison, really looks up to Rake even though he's a killer too, he kills to protect. And then you have the whole water symbolism where Rake jumped off the cliff into the water and then in the end of the movie, Ovi does the same thing off the diving board and they're both just chilling in the water. And Ovi tells Rake in the middle of the movie that you drown not by falling into the river but by staying submerged in it. And I felt that shit. I myself actually almost drowned in a river. Yeah, it looks super calm on top, but the flow of water underneath can just take you away so easily. I started panicking, getting super fatigued, when I should have just relaxed 
and I would have just, you know, been taken by the river instead of kind of drowning in it. But actually, back to the part where Rake jumps into the water in Australia, his two friends that he was with were hilarious. They were only in the movie for like 20 seconds, but when the big dude was like, quit swearing all the time, makes you sound stupid, find another fucking adjective. That part killed me. Give those guys plate carriers and guns, and I would have loved to see them throughout the movie. Killing people in funny ways, I don't know. So again, this movie is obviously filled with action. That one take action shot, or one take action shot, was nuts. It was just over 11 minutes and 30 seconds. Yes, I timed it because I'm that serious about my craft. But I say one cut because obviously there were cut scenes. They just blended it in to make it look like one cut, but still amazing scene. Like in the car chase, when the camera angle is from outside the car and it does a reverse 180, and then the camera ends up in the vehicle. Shortly after that, the camera pans from inside the car through the glass to the cars behind it. Amazing directing. And another sick ass part, and I actually almost didn't catch this myself, my brother-in-law actually pointed it out. But real quick, safety check. Check the mag, pop the slide back, visually and physically inspect that there's no round in the chamber. Rack the slide forward, point in a safe direction, and click. So he's shooting at a bunch of those military dudes, and he's pounding on the face of one of them, and it actually causes a malfunction in his gun. So he does a one-handed tap rack bang off of his plate carrier. He taps it, racks it, and shoots the guy in the face. Amazing. Shout out to the gun guys that caught that. And then not too long after that, again, still in the one cut, the knife fight. Oh, that was choreographed beautifully. Chris Hemsworth takes out a karambit. This isn't a karambit, but just for visual. Just the attack hand and block hand combat, so sick. And the disarming and the everything was great. But not only that, the acting was really good too because you could see the hesitation in one another. Neither of them wanted to make the first move, but when they did, they just knew what the hell that they were doing. Love seeing that in action movies. Also, when he was zip tied and he tightened it up been busted out of it. That's actually a real escape tactic when you're zip tied. I don't have any large zip ties here, but if you're ever bound by zip ties, you move the mechanism to the very top, so like 12 o'clock, in between your hands. He bit down and cinched it tighter because you want it as tight as possible. And what you're doing is you're pulling outward, raising your hands well above your head, and chopping down as hard as you can and it busts the ties. And I love seeing like real survival stuff in films. I think it's just like good tips. So if you're ever in zip ties and then after that zip tie scene where he's doing the actual extraction, oh man, machetes flying, AKs going off. And there was a scene where He's disarmed and he's going up against a guy with a machete. He just, he grabs a tin cup off the table and just one shots a dude in the chin. Just, and he was out. But yeah, Rake's a badass. Speaking of which, in the same fight scene, he kills two dudes with a rake. And I would have never realized that scene had actually happened if Ovi didn't say, it's a strange last name though. Isn't that like a gardening tool? I was like, huh, oh shit. He killed two dudes with a rake. So good. I don't really have a lot of dislikes with the movie. It did kind of drag on in the middle, but I knew, I knew when I saw David Harbour, he was gonna mess shit up. I get why they had that scene in there, just like the importance of having that kid killed but I kinda could have gone without that part. But getting to what I'm sure a lot of you were here for, the guns. Because as a gun guy, when you watch action movies, oh, that's a FN score. That's a HKUMP45. 
we love to point out what guns are in what movie or what guns people used. So for those that don't do that, I'll go over it for you. So first off, we have Saju, who is like OV Senior's right-hand man, who ends up kind of being like his Sicario at the same time. But Saju had an HK MP5 SD, and I loved that he used that gun as his primary weapon, because you don't see that a lot, other than in SWAT movies and stuff like that. But it was cool to shine a light on the MP5 SD. Super compact submachine gun, integrally suppressed. There's just so much win in that. And obviously, Rake had an AR-15, and I know you gun guys were already like, ah, oh, that's a magnified EOTech. Ah, oh, that's a BCM foregrip. Yeah, he had a sick setup. But I mean, you know, good guy, AR-15. And then you had Nick, who had the black FN scar. Actually, one other dislike. By the end of the film, when they were all on the bridge, all of a sudden, everyone's Chris Kyle. Just everybody. Boom. Thousand yard headshot. Boom. Thousand yard headshot. And then after Rake gets hit in the neck by Farhad, and she gets all mad and starts firing back at him, well, yeah, you're going to miss that closer range if you're optics zeroed at a thousand yards i don't know that's just me then you have the swat guys with the hk ump 45s hk g36 c's on the movie poster it should have said extraction brought to you by heckler and coke and another sick scene when saju and ovi had to get through the blockade and rake had the m79 grenade launcher Tell me you didn't get Terminator 2 Judgment Day vibes. Just Arnold Schwarzenegger just thumpering everybody from the second floor. And the last gun that I caught was G's gun. So out of the Mercenaries squad, there's an Extractor, an Overwatch, and two Exfil guys. And G, the Overwatch guy, played by the director Sam Hargrave. That's a little fun fact. He was rocking an AICS Remington 700. Want one of those so bad? Actually, I'll take any of them, really. HK Remington, let me know. Oh, and then lastly, of course, I noticed there was a Tavor for like 0.5 seconds in the movie, fired by somebody on Nick's team. So after being in multiple fights, shot in the back, cut, stabbed, shot in the neck, fell off a bridge and into the water. Let me know in the comments, do you think that he's still alive or that was him at the end of the movie? Or was that kind of just a metaphor for him always going to be there for Obi? Absolutely loved the movie. Other than that one dragging part in the middle, I really wouldn't change anything about it. So much gunplay, so much action, so many fighting scenes. What more could you want? Gets an A plus in my book. For the would you rather, if you were Rake, would you have taken the 10 million and offed Ovi? Or would you rather do what Rake did and get him to the extraction point, even though you knew it was a lost cause? Let me know down in the comments. Go ahead and use your tin can and gingerly tap that like button and subscribe button. And don't forget, don't be a dick, be a blessing.